This is ODAT Chat, your instant connection to recovery and community, one day at a time. This podcast may contain strong language, sexual content, and spiritual truth. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another episode of the ODAT Chad podcast. My name is Arlena and I'll be your host. And today we are doing live step work calls. So the purpose of these calls is so that those of you who maybe haven't tried the steps yet will kind of get a little insight into what it's like and you'll get to see firsthand how it helps people transform. So I hope you enjoy that. If uh, you do, I hope that you subscribe on iTunes and you share with your friends. So with that, please enjoy this step one with Kate. Okay. Well, Kate, thank you so much for joining me on the ODOT Chat podcast. Hi. Thank you for having me today. We're doing step one. I know. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. excited. Are you? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's a big deal. And uh, mm-hmm. it, I feel like this time we have together has a lot of purpose. So it's a big deal. Great. So thank you so much for being willing to play along. Absolutely. Thank you. And we had such a good conversation yesterday uh, talking about today. And I was like, gosh, I wish we would have recorded that. That was amazing. <laughs> I know. I think I was ready for it. And then I was like, oh, wait, this isn't the time. So, this is so. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have this like a, a little pre-call to yeah. you know, just check in and stuff. But um, yeah, it sounds like you're all set. Mm-hmm. I am. Awesome. I so so um, before we start, I'm going to just take a minute to invite God in and mm-hmm. uh, or your higher power, or whatever, just so that we get centered. And okay. <sighs> Dear Father, thank you so much for bringing Kate into my life. And for her willingness to um, do this work that can be really uncomfortable sometimes. But I pray that you just guide our, our thoughts and our hearts that you might lead us to the information or the truth that would lead to, to healing and the freedom from the addiction and alcoholism. And uh, thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. All right. Okay, so uh, let's see. So we're doing the steps out of, we're doing step one, which is about powerlessness and unmanageability. And um, as we discuss this, I might ask you some questions to dig a little deeper, and I'm not looking to um, make you feel bad about anything. The goal is to uh, identify causes and conditions. You and I talked a little bit about um, the compulsiveness of, you know, and the it, it is cunning, baffling, and powerful, the alcoholism. It's like you can be just fine. And then, and I think you had an experience over the weekend. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? That sort of. Sure, sure. Um, so I uh, t- had a step back. So I did um, relapse this past weekend. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, we had talked about how you can have this certain mindset mindset that this is, this is it. This is the last time. Um, be super strong one day, um, or for many days and many weeks, I've had weeks, I've had months and, um, I could be walking up the stairs with a strong mindset and immediately go pour a glass of wine. And as I'm doing it, saying to myself, what are you doing? Like, this isn't, this isn't what you want. You you know, you're not going to feel good afterwards, but oh, well, you, you know, you're going to do it. So I, I mean, it literally happens walking up the stairs and, um, I just don't understand how the mind can flip just like that. And you're, yeah. you're, it's like, it's like a, it's like I'm watching myself from above or outside of my body and it's somebody else, but I'm watching me do it. If that makes any sense at all. And yeah. I always regret it. And it, and it doesn't mean it's, because it's a horrible hangover each time. I just regret it because I don't like it anymore. No, it adds zero value. So I don't understand yeah. why I continuously go back. Right. Yeah. And we, and we talked a little bit about how, um, you know, you're a very uh, um, ambitious, accomplished yes. you have, and, um, you do marathons and you're, yeah. you do yeah. all this stuff. You're a mom, yeah. you have mar- very motivated. Yeah, super motivated, highly accomplished. And so 
you know, the idea of um, powerless and unmanageable um, doesn't translate to the rest of your life, but it's just in this one area. Yeah, um, I feel like an oxymoron, you know, I feel like a complete, it's, it yes, it doesn't transfer into any other part of my life. So it's very um, frustrating, confusing, and I feel like I should just be able to do this. So, mm -hmm. so, so going through the, um, you know, step one and, and really understanding that word of power Lessness. And I told you, I don't like the word unmanageable, but mm -hmm. it is. I mean, yeah. this is the thing in my life that is making my life not what to be. Right. So at first I'm like, hmm, I don't like that word. I'm not unmanageable. <laughs> but then I, as I'm reading through the scripts and going and writing it down, I'm like, yes, yes, I am. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. what makes my life unmanageable. So yeah, and it's, it's just in this. Too, yeah, too. it's just in this context too, though. It's not unman like not your entire life is unmanageable, but in this context, oh. yeah, we had a little technical snafu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so we're we were just talking about how um, we're just trying to get make the connection between the powerlessness and the unmanageability, and so that's yes. what this exercise is about. We're looking for concrete evidence how you're powerless over the drinking and mm -hmm. so um <clears throat> how did you find so you did step one you read the 12 and 12 step one from the 12 and 12 and bill's story yes yeah how is that for you um 12 and 12 definitely was um was easier i think to digest um just i think because of the writing um, <laughs> but, but bill's story was still you know um pieces of it were very, I wouldn't say mind blowing, but, um, a good introduction, I think for me as to yeah. where kind of it all started and, um, you know, how there's so many of us that I just, you know, kind of go through life and, um, wonder like the whys and when it's kind of right there in front of us, but we like with a higher power and things like that, we don't mm -hmm. let it into our lives. Um, and you know, the whole stigma and fear, I think, around sure. um aa and and that um had kind of kept me away until i heard you on the podcast so Ooh, um, i found it you know like i said 12 and 12 easier to digest and understand yeah i love the 12 and 12 um i'm currently obsessed with step seven but we'll run mm. there yet <laughs> i heard that i haven't even looked at what it is yet but Oh my God. Well, it's the 12 and 12 and the, it's the step seven and the 12 and 12 that hit me like a ton of bricks. But yeah. you know, they talk about humility being the foundation of, uh, of all of the steps. Mm -hmm. So, and, and really that just means, um, seeking and doing God's will. Right. So, um, anyway, uh, we're not there yet, but, uh, no, no. I'm, got, I'm glad you had a good experience, uh, with step one. Um, and the step one promise from the big book on page 58 and crossing the river of denial. Denial is such a funny thing because it's mm. like, well, how would you know if you were in denial? <laughs> you know, you know, deep you down, know. you know. Like, that's why I'm here, you know? Like, right. <laughs> I'm not even denying it anymore, but I did for a long time. Yeah, yeah, which is totally understandable. Yeah, we were talking earlier about, um, you know, it's so, it's such a, our mind is there to protect us against the pain, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and we spend a lot of time and energy disconnecting from that pain so that when um some, something like you know alcoholism pops up it's like why is this happening and it's and it's because the feelings that um, are unresolved are coming out sideways right and so it's a distraction you're you know we use our mind uses distraction as a way or obsession really as a way to distract us from our pain and yes and obsession is a great word yeah. Right. And I listen, and I've seen people do it. I use obsession around uh, relationship, love addiction, mm -hmm. food addiction, food. Sure. shopping, um, you know, retail therapy. We joke about retail therapy, but oh, that absolutely. can totally, I can relate to that. <laughs> I know me too. I <laughs> that and sugar is my downfall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, um, I think, you know, and they say that alcohol is but a symptom. So as we address the underlying issues, um, mm -hmm. you know, the need for that compulsiveness yes. will fade away. So, um, okay. So, uh, exercise one, I keep reading yeah. the, um, the step one, but, and mm -hmm. I, I've done that a bunch of times, so I'm not gonna do that again this time, but exercise one. So 
awareness. Begin on your knees with a prayer to your higher power, asking for clarity and direction. Did you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah, I think I might have told you I didn't directly get on my knees, but yeah, I did yeah. sit down in a private yeah. spot and um, um, did pray to my higher power. And mm -hmm. um, it was interesting because I think I, we mentioned that I have thought about all of these things before, but I don't think I've actually written it down mm -hmm. in regards to being on, things being un unmanageable. Um, and it kind of just flowed. Um, and if you want, I can read some of the, the sure, points that yeah. I write. It yeah. basically says, um, you know, write down all that you feel powerless over and all that's making life unmanageable. So um, biggest thing for me, I would say it makes my emotions, my mind and my spirit unmanageable in the following ways. The word sparkle. So absolutely dulls my sparkle. And I yeah. mentioned the missing of that, that joy. You know, when uh -huh. you were a kid, we, we talked about this a bit where, you know, the little things in life made yeah. you fill with joy. And um, it's been a very long time, you know, I feel like I have a um, very full, great life, great family, great friends. Um, but it's been a long time since you feel that, 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 that feeling of just pure joy mm -hmm. because everything now involves consuming. Mm -hmm. Um, so it dealt my sparkle, um, depression, anxiety, insecurities, um, fogs my thinking and memories, um, mm -hmm. definitely makes me irritable and, um, overreacting in certain situations. Okay. When I'm what, ki what kind of, uh, situations do you find yourself overreacting? Um, it, like little things. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, uh, if my husband or somebody says something that probably wouldn't annoy me, uh, you know, if I wasn't drinking, mm -hmm. um, does. So I would tend to even little things, like if things aren't picked up in the house or those dishes left in the sink, things that usually just would annoy me would be more of a um, means to be, um, you know, pissed off or mm -hmm. um, startified or things like that, which in general, we don't. That's just not how we operate in the house. We have a very, yeah. uh, thankfully, um, great relationship where we can openly communicate, which it's tends peaceful. to break down. You have a For peaceful me. household unless oh, you're drinking. Yes, definitely. I mean, we are rambunctious and we're very energetic, but there's <laughs> no, I mean, we've been able to thankfully later on in life, um, find somebody who's very compatible for me. Um, so yeah, unless that's involved, it's very rare. Okay. Yes. I was just curious about like, um, the little, like specifically the little things that set you off because typically, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times we're just suppressing things and then when we drink it all comes out and sometimes yes. little things can trigger and that's the thing it's like we do we we stuff all our feelings and then it comes out sideways because something will trigger it but like i was curious i'll be looking for patterns like if there's like dishes in the sink like what does that mean to you does it mean like everybody waits for you waits for mom to do it or sure. does it that's, does it yeah. feel disrespectful or just your resentment, disrespectful, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, um, in general, don't get me wrong. I could be totally coming just home from work and feel that way. Um, yeah. I think it's how we react to those situations right. um, that make a big difference, whether under yeah. the influence or I not. was always taught that whenever uh, my reaction is disproportionate to the situation, it's not about the situation. It's about, it's about a release of emotion from, from the past. Totally. It's not the yeah. dish. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not, not the dish. The dish. <laughs> it's not the dish. No, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm okay. sure as we work through this, sure. um, I think we talked about it yesterday that um, I'm, I'm nervous, but very excited to start to uncover those reasons why, yeah. because um, I know a lot of the reasons are, are flippant and not the reaction doesn't match up with whatever, you know, the mm -hmm. situation is. Yeah. I'm much more hot headed than my husband is much more. And there's reasons for that. Yeah, thank God, thank God he's not. <laughs> some pent up unresolved stuff, but we'll get we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think uh, I in interrupted you. You you had yeah. more to read. No, yep, I do. Yep. So um, so overreacting. Um, so uh, it damages you know um me mentally, like physically, spiritually, oh, right. um, and um, control. Right. So I, I I think a lot of us tend to be um, mm -hmm. controlling perfectionist. I, I can't control it. Like I can't control the way it makes me feel. So like um, even in moderation, mm -hmm. meaning like one glass or five, it just ultimately makes me feel bad, bad, right. sad, mad, anxious. Um, so just, it, it just sucks. Um, yeah. A big thing that we've talked about is like authenticity, right? So um, this is tough. This is probably the toughest part for me because it invites deception. Um, into my life where 
um, it doesn't anywhere else. Um, very, very embarrassing part of um, this is that nobody really knows how much I drink and when I do. Um, and that's like huge shame, shame, guilt. Oh, um, yeah. But it's, it's really, I think, going to be a release to be able, just by talking to you, because um, yeah. I've never talked to anybody about that, you know, and it's yeah. a very lonely um, place to be yeah. is holding that in. Um, yeah, and it's time for me to like let it go. I've got to tell, I'm telling you, telling mm-hmm. the world, whoever's listening to this, yeah. um, that, um, you know, that's the worst thing. Because I know, I know how much I drink. Um, I know how much um, and when I do. And if, if, if my friends and my family did, because we've talked about this too, like they don't think I have a problem. Um, and if they knew, if they knew any of my actions, <laughs> mm. um, you know, about hiding it, they absolutely would be like, oh yeah, I get it. You go, you go do whatever you got to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay, yes, you do. Um, yeah. You know, even even in the social circles, because we have um, all of my social circles um, drink, and it involves sometimes heavy, sometimes not. Um, but even though they may know what I drink there, there's always those before and afters. Um, I tend to not usually go after. I tend to go to bed at a reasonable time. But, I mean, I can day drink, like, the best of them. So, right, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, and it can be over – the simplest day of tasks laundry um cleaning moving we talked about moving sure um and um it's just something that it's a go-to it's like i wouldn't do one without the other which is so strange yeah. because um because of that other side of my life right yeah. the running the working out the um you know the be, being I, I don't even think that i am because i know myself but like a role model to others um oops mm-hmm. hold on one sec here Awesome. Uh, I just got a phone call. Um, so um, it just is, that's the worst part of this for me. Right. The worst yeah. part is deception. Yeah. And I really, I could really, I could see it in your face, you know, the, um, you know, the guilt and shame. It's, you know, they're just words, but when it's happening to you, it is the worst. Yeah. You feel like a, you just, you just feel like a jerk. Like you feel I, like, um, it's terrible. Yeah. Like, and I don't even know, I can't even tell you when that first happened. I mean, I'm 41. So it's been a good 20 years on this ride of, you know, the yeah. first 10 years thinking it's just social. Um, and then it, I think it started more in my thirties, like my, yeah. my early thirties where, um, I don't know. I, I made a joke of it to myself that, Oh, I'm Irish. I have a high tolerance. You know, this is normal. No mm-hmm. big deal. Um, Mm -hmm. but as I, um, you know, I had my first child at 38, that's when this really all kicked in. Mm -hmm. Like this real, you get a look at yourself now because it's not just yourself, Kate, anymore. It's, you know, you have these beautiful children and a beautiful husband and you deserve better. You know, I deserve better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, that's the toughest part. It is. And, uh, I just think it's, it's just interesting how, um, it's all coming it's all coming together now. It's and everything evolves, right? So yeah. it, you know, maybe it wasn't a problem in your thirties, twenties, or thirties. But you know, they say that um, they say that alcoholism is progressive. But in my mind, everything evolves. Mm-hmm. Like we continue, we all we're always evolving, and sometimes we're devolving. Yeah, right? so, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that too much, but um, yeah. must stay vigilant, you know. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just time to deal with it. And I yep. think uh, all these, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, um, there are no mistakes, only lessons, and a lesson yep. is repeated until it's learned. Yeah. And um, so you had some valuable information over the weekend that mm-hmm. helped you solidify and clarify that in this one area, you know, and it, it's really, I think in time you'll see it as a gift because and until I was forced to do the self-examination, um, I would, I would never, I never would have done it. I didn't know how to do it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I showed up to a, a completely self-centered, but incapable of self-examination. Yep. Uh, all I ever thought about is what I needed, what I wanted, what was I going to get? I mean, it was all, yes, but never did I look at, you know, never did I consider that people were responding negatively to my behavior like I was the instigator and I didn't even see it 
I'm definitely starting to reflect on that. That's, I think, part of one of these things is that oh. um, past relationships, like, um, mm. don't, don't get me wrong, I know that I've had my, my uh, fair share of um, why they didn't work out, but I never pinpointed that, you know? Yeah. Um, um, like what your part uh, was, like right? That. It was, now I think back on them and I'm like, oh my God, like, that probably didn't work out because of that, those, that this reason, you know, right, um, yeah. and it was a two way street in most of those uh, relationships, but yeah. it's just weird how you can look back and, and, and just really have a different, um, you know, a different bird's eye view of as your actions. And, yeah. um, once People the dust are, settles and looking yeah. back, I can certainly see that played into a lot of this. Yeah. And just the one thing I wanted to say about relationships, um, past relationships is that, uh, water seeks its own level you know, and mm -hmm. as when somebody tells me about who they're with, what they're telling me is what they feel that they deserve. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just a reflection of what we allow because whatever you settle for is what you said. That's, that's what you get. Yeah. You settle it's for true. someone who doesn't treat you right. Then that's what you get. You get someone who doesn't treat you right. And we only allow it because we feel like we deserve it on some level. Mm -hmm. And it's always subconscious. It's typically not something. Typically it's like, they, there's this concept of uh, the the person of maximum attraction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's usually like a like a drug. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's yeah. not good for you. It gets you yeah. really high, but there's typically a price to pay for that high. Yeah. So um, anyway, um, okay. So you can you're seeing how you are um, at the cause of your behavior, not at the yeah. effect of it. Like people are right. not. Yeah, they're not. Um, being mean out of, out of spite. It's just mm -hmm. possibly, you know, all together, but yeah. um, that's okay. That's good to know. Uh, did, did you have anything else in exercise one that we missed? Um, so kind of just, um, what do I have? Just like the overthinking we've, you know, whether oh. you know, I've the overthinking, it's just overthinking part of life now. Like it's just, um, it's whether I am drinking or not, it's, it's always there. So I think releasing myself of that, um, and, you know, I, I think I told you I belong to an amazing um, online group of women who um, can relate to that. And it's, it's, it consumes you. Mm -hmm. It consumes you. Um, it's great that you can share it with other people. So you're mm -hmm. not alone. Um, mm -hmm. But it is um, something that I want to turn off in my head um, or the hamster wheel, right? So sure. uh, the constant saying you're going to change, you do it, and then you go right back onto that hamster wheel again. It just has to stop. Yeah. It's so that, those are the way that I feel that things are unmanageable. Oh, okay. over. Very good. Um, okay, so exercise two, what are, the, uh, what are some examples of your behavior or actions that have come to light that you're feeling powerless? We kind of went over that. Do you think there's anything yeah. that we missed? Um, just overall health, right? Overall so health. About, um, yeah, health is important um, to you. Yeah, it's really important to me. And I, I still, I'm still, I'm still baffled how I've been able to, and I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just baffled how many of us can still achieve certain health goals <laughs> while yeah. ravaging our bodies with this um, poison. Um, but I wonder what I could have done. Do you know what I mean? Like it, right. um, it, it uh, just completely and utterly demoted, you know, it just um, unmotivates me. So um, I've had many, many uh, training and runs hung over. Those suck. Um, oh my gosh, that you, sounds awful. You know, yeah, I mean, the eating thing too, right? It's just a bad cycle where, you know, you eat well, but then you eat horribly because you feel horrible. And <laughs> um, I just, you know, just the behaviors have resulted in just dulling my life like I just want to know what I would be like because I think I'm a pretty yeah. okay person I just yeah no I want to know what my family's life could be like because they deserve so much more you know yeah. they don't even know I say that but maybe they do <laughs> um but you know well your, your kids are still little they don't know any different yeah I know thank you uh, I think they just resulted in um uh a lesser me and mm. I think that um I know that I deserve to be full and I know that the people around me, if they like me now, just you wait, <laughs> just wait till you see me, you know, hopefully right. days, a year. That's what I want. You know, yeah. I don't want the dependency or the crutch. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I love your ambition and your drive and, um, you know, once this is, you're released from this, um, there is no, there's no limit to your potential. Thank and you. it's exciting to think about uh, 
what you can accomplish when you don't have this yeah. holding you back. Other than, listen, you've already done like marathons yeah. and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Are, what is, and I know you want to be free of the guilt and shame and yeah. live in alignment with your values, right? Mm -hmm. um, are there, do you have, I think it even talks about hopes and dreams um, yeah. somewhere along the line. Um, what are the kind, what are the kinds of goals are you looking forward to? Um, you know, it's funny. It's, it's not the, it's more of the smaller things, I guess. It sounds mm -hmm. maybe insignificant, but to me, um, being, it's so silly. It's like being able to enjoy a weekend, um, yeah. outside with my family that doesn't involve alcohol. It means, um, going to an event, a show, a concert. I mean, I've done it. I've done it before, mm -hmm. but really enjoying it. Um, it's the simple things, the things that I want to be able to be outside and, um, you know, love where I'm at without thinking, when can I go have a glass of wine? Yeah. You know, like it's those things. So, um, but I also think that the bigger things in life, right, with my family and um, being able to travel um and that doesn't involve that like i keep hearing these wonderful stories of people who do it and i haven't been abroad i mean i've been outside of the states but never over to europe or anything like that and that's something that i want to experience when um you know uh, full and clean like that's those right. are the things that i don't want to do it unless mm -hmm. i am because i feel like it's the only way that i want to experience it so mm -hmm. um I won't make any plans or maybe I should just to motivate me <laughs> to do that. We've got two littles. So, um, how old are they? I don't know if that'll happen, um, in the near future, but it's more about, um, you know, it's the daily life that I want to, um, enjoy again. Yeah. And how old are your little ones? Uh, three and a half and seven and a half, two girls, seven and a half girls. Cute. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you want to be a good example to them. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I don't, I mean, I know they're young, but I know, I know, you know, that there is always a sense um, of being, of, of knowing if your mom or dad are present. Mm -hmm. I know there is. Um, I think I remember feeling that, you know, so even if they don't know exactly what we're doing yet or what I'm doing, um, they deserve more. Yeah, they'll feel you know, the they, difference. They don't deserve the numbing out. They deserve me fully there. Yeah. Even if I'm frustrated or even if I'm having a bad day, you know. Yeah, that's um, normal. Yeah. And my husband does too. Yeah. No, very good. I, I totally get that. I mean, um, you know, we want to be able to teach our kids um, by example how to handle the frustrations of life. You know, life is not always easy and they're going to need to know how to handle that. And, yeah. you know, seeing mom get mad and then work through the feelings and then, you know, have a discussion about it later. Um, yeah. That's how they learn how to process their feelings. You know, I don't know about you. I didn't get a lot of coping skills growing up. You <laughs> no. Know? Oh, no. This is my coping skill. <laughs> you know, yeah. And I started later on in life. Um, but um, no, no. And how I've did your, I'm just curious. How did your parents deal with um, like your feelings as a little girl? Did they, oh, how did they manage? No. So, um, Mom, not very well, very explosive, um, mm. um, verbally and physical abuse, uh, abusive. Um, but I, and I, you know, yes, she takes her, um, she holds herself accountable now, but I do believe it's the way that she was brought up very similar, even worse. Um, so um, there were no um, tools um, mm -hmm. that we were given or provided. Um, so, you know, you build your own. Um, mine mm -hmm. aren't very sturdy in that area. And right. I know that it's almost like, I feel like it's, um, hereditary <laughs> it's, it's learning yeah. it's being in your environment so yeah um, I definitely have that um, I acquired the uh, lack of coping skills yeah so my mom is ex was exactly the same she was very explosive when I was young so um you know her anger felt big and I would just yes. shrink get small, yes cringe just, all the time yeah I was we, we walked down the hall I knew the cup you know like it, you know yeah. what, what, what's gonna happen you know so yeah. always on guard on guard just um I think adapting. That was why I think I waited so long to have children. I didn't want to do that mm. um, oh. uh, or, or react in that sort of way. I was very nervous um, right. to somehow, uh, you know, um, I never ever want to be the, you know, uh, abusive or, or hit our children. So right. I was always very apprehensive about that. Um, thankfully, I yeah. can say that hasn't happened and we're our own people still. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have been able to uh, avoid that, thankfully. 
um, yes. probably <laughs> with numbing. <laughs> so um, yeah. it is a coping it. skill. It's not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very interesting. Okay. Um, let's see. So part of the exercise in three talks about the negative consequences and destructive behavior caused by all the things in exercise two that you're feeling powerless and unmanageable. So it talks about how does it affect your daily life? How does it sure. affect your health and self-esteem? We talked about your health. Mm -hmm. How are you, um, how would you rate your self-esteem? That's interesting. Um, uh, again, it's like a Jekyll and Hyde. Um, there's, um, I feel um, pretty confident in most aspects of my life, um, mm -hmm. but there's that negative cloud in there mm -hmm. that um, it's it's almost it's it's bad. It's I think it's I I feel like I um, model this uh, optimistic, energetic, very positive, mm -hmm. um, outward uh, personality, and I feel it. But in my head, I'm like. I think everybody's a jerk and it's horrible. Like, cause I, it's these bad feelings in my head and it's, um, it's on like a, uh, you like know, a loop. it keeps us. Yeah. A loop. And then it digs into my brain that it's, that this is you, Kate. Like I'm, it's weird at this point in life because I catch it a lot more. Like, yeah. why am I having these negative feelings about society or, or that person walking down the road or, or, you know, somebody cuts in front of you, whatever. Um, but it's me. Like it's, it's these, it's me. Like yeah. I've turned transformed into this negative person and I never thought I would be. And I honestly feel in my heart of all hearts that it's due to years and years of adding this toxic poison that changes how you think. It is cumulative. Who you are and very slowly. Yeah. So you wake up one day being like, Hey, I'm this really cool, like nice person when I'm really not. Yeah. And I don't, it's not good. It's, um, I, I can be cruel. Um, I can be very um, stubborn and closed minded and um, short tempered, like I said. Um, so, and then once, and then it all comes down to waking up and looking in the mirror and just saying, you're an asshole. Sorry, can mm -hmm. I swear on you? Absolutely. Okay. You, you know, you're the jerk. Like, right. this, this is you. It's nobody else. It's you. And only right. you can change that. So, um, so self esteem, I'd say it's weird. I, it's, it's not amazing, um, but it's um, the, the parts that are low are, are definitely um, contribute to drinking. That's interesting because if uh, everybody I've spoken to that has grown up with like a critical parent has mm -hmm. like this um, validation through performance. Like 100%. Yeah, right? <laughs> like you mentioned uh, perfectionism and perfectionism is about having to do twice as much to feel half as good. Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, in everything that I do and everything that I do, um, yeah. that's where I get, or where I get my fulfillment from, you know, yeah. um, achievement, achievement, uh, being competitive, um, yeah. you know, competing. Um, yeah, that's competitive. That's definitely. Um, me. You know, and it's so funny because in some ways, you know, that's what makes us, um, who we are, like the parts that we like about ourselves. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the goal um, is to maintain balance because anything out of balance can, is destructive, right? So it's tough. Yes. And, I, and I don't mean like a razor's edge balance. Yeah, yeah. I just mean like, you know, there's a range. A healthy balance. <laughs> a healthy balance. Yeah. Balance has never been my strong suit. But um, I think and no, there's no perfect. And I think, yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people, especially women, especially these days, yeah. um, use that word a lot. You know, like Perfectionism? Oh, I just get my life in balance and there's oh, balance. no right or wrong way. And I know that. Yeah. Um I just think, you know, like you said, kind of getting more centered in a way where mm -hmm. it's not so much negative. It's a little you know, there's, there's no perfect balance and mm -hmm. I think we all try to reach that and we're never going to, so we're never gonna be happy. Well, um, it makes sense, right? Because we're always evolving. So yeah. that, that means the boundaries are always moving. And boundaries are a funny thing because uh, sometimes you don't know where they are until you cross them. Right. right? Correct. Like, yes. Yeah. Like I'm sure like things that you're okay with today, um, yeah. as you get more in touch with your feelings, you're going to just be like, wait a minute, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with people coming over the house and pe someone's peeking in the toilet or <laughs> someone's getting a little loose and oh, God, no. just robes. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> What I accepted in my twenties, I no longer accept. <laughs> right? sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's um, the one thing about age is our tolerance <laughs> will bullshit kind of decreases, right? <laughs> it's 
<laughs> I'm just looking like, like I said, you know, these big, I'm not looking for these huge, I mean, this is still huge, right? This is probably going to be the biggest thing that I do, I think for myself in life. Um, but I just want to <laughs> enjoy the little things again in life. Like, you know, and you, you, you mentioned little things several times now. And, um, what I want you to know is the little things are the big things. That's what, right? The like little that's... things are the big things. And the little tweaks that we can make. I heard an, a golfing analogy. Do you golf by any chance? No. Mm -mm. Well, does your husband? He does. He does. <laughs> I've seen golf. <laughs> I have. And he does. He does golf. He does. I know what it is. Well, <laughs> it's interesting because the head of the golf club, let's just say it's like three or four inches. Yeah. And if you just turn it just a few millimeters, it changes the entire trajectory of the ball. It's the difference between, um, even in like at the highest echelon of golfing Tiger Woods, it's the difference between millions of dollars and right. being unknown. Just, just the tiny, tiny bit, right? Tweaks, right. And the great analogy. Isn't that great? Because it, it means, and, and you have such good instincts and you don't even know it. It's like, the little tweaks that you make in your life are going to change the entire trajectory of your whole life. It is the little things that matter. You have really good instincts. Thank you. Yeah. So I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. You know, I do. I really, I feel, I keep saying that because I know that's what's going to be different for me. You know, I don't need, I don't need the million dollars. I mean, it'd be lovely. Um, but I, I just know it's there. Carlina, I know that mm -hmm. I do remember those little glimmers of mm -hmm. um, just pure joy, you pure know, joy. and I just, I, I see it in my kids' eyes, you know, I, I do. And I, I, you know, we live in the world, right? So the world's not perfect, blah, blah, blah. We know that. But um, it's just, I know it's out there. I mean, I yeah. see it. I hear it. Um, you know, when I listen to podcasts, I see the amazing um you know, journeys that some of the women um, I, I connect with online um, who have struggles every day like the rest of us. It's sure. not paradise. Um, but just freeing your mind of all of this ridiculous overdrive garbage mm -hmm. um, due to alcohol is, um, it just sounds pretty amazing. So, yeah. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it doesn't tear up so much. Ooh. I know you just have a lot bottled up is all. <laughs> yeah. I just need a, a little safe space to let it all out. So that's awesome. Um, okay. So the very last part of the exercise, is it helpful to be specific if you can? Oh, it is helpful to be specific if you can about uh, what you are aware of that you want to change and write as little or as much as you want about step one. The main thing is not, <laughs> not to overthink it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and listen to your inner inner voice. So, was there anything else uh, that you wrote that you feel like you want to share, um, or do you feel like we covered it mostly? I think. I mean, I think we covered really. I mean, I we covered a bunch, but um, yeah. you know, I think one of the top. I think just for anybody who's starting out and um, like myself again. Um, is I'm sorry, you're gonna get all the sniffling audio on your podcast here. That's um, okay. Is uh, just uh, being patient uh, for that whole higher power um, thing mm -hmm. because um, I think I mentioned I wanted I wanted to be that person that got down on my knees and was like, oh my god, I feel it, like bring it in, like I, you know, like this yeah, is, yeah. I can, you know, I haven't um, been able to have that full connection. Um, I think it's my personality though to. Mm -hmm. um, to try to say the words and I say them, but to really fully feel them mm -hmm. and let my walls down. I have yeah. protected myself for years and years. I've gotten where I've gotten by mm -hmm. being strong, you know? Yeah. And um, I think that's maybe as I continue to work through this and I do, um, you know, do my prayers at night um, mm -hmm. and speak throughout the day um, to what I'm hoping to, um, you know, form relationship with my higher power. Um, but just to be patient with that, like I need to, I need to, I know myself needs to be patient with that because I feel like as we work through this, um, that will get stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm hoping that, um, that that's the case for me. I, I just wanted to kind of put that out there because I struggle with that. Um, yeah, and to so not, important. not, and not just, you know, close the door on that or don't think it will happen for you because, um, I feel in my, in my soul that it will. So you feel very hopeful. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and I'll, the only thing that's coming up for me uh, when you, when you talk about that is um, there's this really good um, book called um, A Course in Miracles and Marianne Williamson. I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with her, but she, A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, really interesting. It's, it's uh, they call it spiritual psychotherapy, but it, they talk a lot about the ego. Marianne Williamson has lots of lectures online about them, but what, but the reason I bring that up is because um, it talks about the ego. You know, the ego speaks yeah. first and the ego speaks loudest. Yes. And I think that when um, in the presence of God or the source or whatever you want to call it, that it's a quiet energy, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I have always, I was always, see, like I grew up in the church and I was always looking for like the thunderbolt, please strike me perfect type yes. of thing. And it's like that doesn't, for me, God has shown up in the quiet moments. And like, you know, that's why that um, saying, be still and know mm-hmm. that I am God. Because when I'm really still, it's because the voice is deep down and it's quiet and it's subtle, okay. but it's profound. And it is the little things, right? Right. The little I'm things. That should be what this episode should be called. The little What's that? Things. The little things. The little things. Yeah. <laughs> there's, maybe there's a book in there for you. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Once you're free. <laughs> But so, anyway, that's, you know, it does evolve, you know, as, as you put energy into it, it, everything evolves. Like you can just trust that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I'm to- I'm a science girl. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm right. a God of evidence. Exactly. And I think that's been my struggle my whole life. So, um, yeah. I'm learning to break down those walls. So, yeah, well, I, I look forward to hearing about your God moments, you know, you'll you start, you'll start seeing things differently as you put your attention on that and, um, I'm excited to hear what you talk with. Yeah. Well, listen, um, I, so you have step two. Yes. I'm working okay. on, I just started that last night. Awesome. Okay. So when you're done, just let me yep. know. I think I sent you a little, I may not have sent you a link. Oh, I did. Did I send you the link to the calendar invite thing? I don't, I got this I have Zoom it? link, but I don't think I got okay, the calendar link. Okay, I have a, um, I'll give you a link to my calendar, then you can um, just schedule a time. Oh, yeah. No, I, I don't have that. more efficient. That would be great. <laughs> great. I like that, too. Organized. I like being efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send it over, and I'll, I'll mark a, a date for us. Okay, sounds good. Well, listen, you, great work. I Thank just, you. I, you are adorable, <laughs> and I too. really enjoy your energy. I'm excited to see the things that you come up with. So, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Arlena. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed the podcast today, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher and leave a review. And if you'd like to make a donation to the podcast and help me keep the lights on, you can do so by visiting odatchat.com. There's a donation button or membership button on the right hand side. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us.